I solved the biggest problems with my gaming setup by running cables through the floor and putting all the PCs in the house in this room in the basement. Unfortunately, I created a separate problem. At 31 degrees Celsius, and this is with my computer sitting idle, it's gotten so hot in here that I'm getting over temperature errors from the hard drives in my NAS. Thankfully, I have a solution. It involves this radiator from a Chrysler PT Cruiser, this bucket with a hole in the side, and Alex, you know it's gonna be exciting. Just like this exciting message from our sponsor. Jackery, Jackery's Explorer 2000 Pro portable power station provides a massive 2000 watt hour capacity for up to eight devices charging simultaneously and takes just two hours to recharge from zero to 100%. Get 10% off with code Linus Tech Tips at the link down below. Okay, before we even start, can we open this door? It's like actually terrible in here. I am not prepared for 31 degrees. I don't think we can, because it takes a while to reach equilibrium and we want to see our results. I think we have to work in the heat. Oh. The obvious way to cool the inside of your house would be to use air conditioning. And conveniently, I have an air conditioner right here. We could literally just put a whole saw to this thing and it would start dumping cold air into this room. Yeah, that would be great. It's what, like five degrees outside, running your AC in November? <laughs> we came up with an even stupider plan. We ran these pipes from the mechanical room to the outside of the house, where in a perfect world, they'll dump all of that excess heat into the pool. Unfortunately, we don't live in my perfect world and the pool is not done. No. Which means we need a temporary solution. This is very temporary. I've got the king of temporary <laughs> solution right Have you here seen though. what's in here? Let's go! <laughs> However janky our implementation is, the theory is actually very sound and inspired by the way that they cool large data centers. Data center architects have to work under many of the same constraints that a typical gamer would. So while obviously they would love to put a water block on every heat generating component, that adds time, cost, and complexity. So one of the most common ways of water cooling a data center is actually to air cool the servers. So they pull in cold air at the front of the rack and push hot air out the back and then use water to cool down that hot air. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take this car radiator, strap it to the back of this server where the hottest air is coming out. Therefore, the heat exchange will be most efficient. Then we're gonna run that hot water out to the outside. And just how much hotter is it here at the back of the rack? 42. I knew it was very unpleasant back here, but my You're goodness. Slow cook yourself. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Oh, this is gonna work great, Alex. I mean, there's still time for water to spray all over my computers. As hot as it is back there, and as interesting as that is, the spot that we've settled on to take the temperature of the room and gauge whether our experiment worked is right here at the intake for mine and Yvonne's gaming computers. So we're gonna leave this probe right about there. Before we get too into it, I really wanna test these and just make sure that they work. Oh, are these Quick Connects? Yeah, Quick Connects. Oh, that's super handy. But yeah. like one time use Quick Connects. No, you can keep on using them. This thingy right here on the tube, push it in, the little shark bites come out and then boop. Yeah, yeah. gonna fall off. <laughs> please, please no fall. Man, I need to put in my will that I want to be buried in LTT store clothes. <sighs> oh, wow. That's it? That's the whole installation? There we go. Really? Yeah. That seems too easy. It feels like cheating. Oh, it might have been good to put these elbows on before we connected these things. Yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, I can see that because you actually did connect an elbow to one of them. <laughs> so you know how you said that you wanted to uh, not spray water oh, all over your server? Yeah, yeah, Teflon tape. Yep, 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 yep. Man, having these pipes coming in above the rack, maybe not the best planning. So in order to get a barb, that's three quarters, they don't exist in the lower mainland right now just because, I don't know, they don't. So we have a barb with a hose connector into a hose connector adapter to NPT to NPT female female and this allows us to get soft tubing connected to that. I spent like $300. Shut up! While well, you're working on that, why don't I get the fans attached to the radiator? Uh, what's the plan for attaching them? Um, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The proper fan for that's like 200 bucks. Instead, we'll be spending way more on an army of Noctua fans. In a well-designed data center, you wouldn't actually even need fans on the radiators because in a well-designed data center, <coughs> not only would we not <coughs> be zip tying fans to our radiator, we wouldn't need them at all. Because the high airflow fans in a typical server or enterprise network switch are also high pressure, they can use a combination of either just 
filling up the whole rack or airflow guides to ensure that the air is only going front to back with very little leakage and there's enough pressure to push that air through the fins. In my setup, on the other hand, we have none of that. So it's on there. I found a hack. If you lie on the floor, it's a lot cooler. <laughs> we know for a lot of people, 31 degrees is not that hot, but we're Canadian, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is we are just soft tube down to there. Yeah, the permanent solution will obviously involve nicely routed pipes, but we have to do something about this because I'm afraid my hard drives are all gonna die. We're gonna do it properly. Are you? If this works well, do you think you're actually gonna do it properly? I have to, and I'll explain why later. There's also the problem where if the power turns off, the bucket that's over there is going to flood this room. The original plan for the pump was the one from the original whole room water cooling. This little guy right here, sadly, it has seen better days. So you guys know, the inside is not supposed to be orange. But the pump that I got is excellent. This is the Grunfoss non-submersible circulation pump, one six of a horsepower, and it is excellent because turns out we have this one right here. Been here since the 90s and is still working. So this guy right here should work for what, another 20, 30 years? Let's hope. Yeah. The best part of that is it's a total coincidence. He got here and was like... Normally a pump like this would be hardwired in. We are not doing that and uh, absolutely never do this. We've said this many times. Oh sh**, you're doing that again? Uh, I should have got a grommet, but I didn't. So instead, I'm going to make a ball of duct tape. Well, what's the worst that can happen? You blow a breaker, who cares? No, the worst that can happen is that my house floods and lights on fire at the same time. Alex! Pretty oh. solid, right? Why didn't you just put the things through the fence? Well, I didn't think of it, obviously. Now that the radiator's mounted, I need a way to power those fans. And what better way than an old doorstop power supply with a whole bunch of fan Y splitters hanging off of it. Normally, a computer power supply doesn't turn on unless it's plugged into a computer. But you can get around that by jumping the green wire with any black wire. So I put this little piece of wire in here, just kind of jam that in there. So if I flick the switch, there we go. Fan spinning and okay, it's really hot here. That's very unpleasant. Cool. <laughs> well, I did my part. What have you been up to? Teflon taping things. Do you want to Teflon tape some things? Oh. Do you want to see how smart, how I did this bucket was? Coming out of this bucket is a barbed fitting. Yeah. Which means we have to go to a barbed fitting, hose adapter, NPT adapter, three quarter to one inch but this is attached using a hose adapter to NPT. So if I had have just flipped it, Are you kidding we could have gone straight into the pump. And now we've got JB Weld all over it. Yeah. The odds of us having a leaky fitting today are basically 100. I agree, which is why I did this. Oh my God. We can fix any leak. Epoxy, flex tape, JB Weld. I even went to Robertson Plastics to get aquarium putty, but sadly they don't carry it anymore. This is on. It's extremely loose. No. Ah? This pump is almost certainly gonna vibrate. Fortunately, uh, we've got a jury-rigged anti-vibration pad, courtesy of lttstore.com. It's not actually longer using on the Wait, which way do you plan on doing this? I plan on pumping out. So we're running this kind of up there okay. and then running the other end to the back. Oh, wait. I forgot about running back to the reservoir. Hey, all right. And it's only just a little bit right in front of my camera. Looking at what a gorgeous job they did of all the plumbing over there. I feel so bad putting this in the same room. Theoretically, this goes out. Should we test it? The way this was supposed to go is there were gonna be four pipes here. Two to go to those water heating solar panels on the roof and two to carry hot water from the mechanical room also to the pool. Unfortunately, there was a miscommunication with the plumber and we ended up with just two. Since most of the heat is gonna come from the solar panels, these need to go to the solar panels, which means we're gonna to have to get creative about removing the heat from the server room. Now, we still have these pipes, which means we can just put a radiator out here to blow the heat into the atmosphere as we're planning to do today. But in the long term, there are actually those buried pipes that go from the mechanical room to the backyard that we found in the prepper PC video, and we're hoping to use those for the mech room. For today though, we gotta uncap these and see if the concept even flipping works. There's shark bite here. Oh. Oh, that thing you showed me earlier. Okay, right. Pull on it now. You just pull on it? That one, oh, what? how does that work? That's like magic. You guys ready? Yep. Okay, I'm firing my laser. Oh, it looks all cool. Oh yeah, it's like a water slide. 
Theoretically, we're about to see water make its way into the pump. It looks like the worm drive clamp is not holding this boy. So if it's just that connector beside the pump, we're fine. If it's coming out around the worm drive, then we have issues. Oh, you know what, Alex? I think we're good. Oh, excellent. Oh yeah. Neither of them is dripping. The ones around the server, we can just give her with the worm drives and then flex tape them and call it a day. Yeah, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, you ready? Yep. I'm starting it at low. She's going. I hear something. Haha, -ha, there we go. Well, that's fantastic. Test successful. It's actually really quiet. Nice. Okay, let's see what happens if I turn it off now. Is it gonna just fill my bucket back up? The pump has like a check valve in it. Oh, that's amazing. There won't be a check valve on the other side. That's the one that will flood it for you. Oh, okay, whatever. Oh wait, no, that's bad. Okay, you ready to run the tubing? Yep. Yeah, let's cut this one like right here. Let's make it a little bit longer. Oh, we're gonna need a couple zip ties though. We can use the handle of the bucket actually as a way to keep it in place. If we wanted to get fancy, we could drill a hole in this and then duct tape it Oh, on. that's super fancy. Yeah, we'll worry about that later though. Okay, um, it's quite flat at this point. Yeah, it's not great. It's yeah, not the best tubing I've ever seen. So you didn't- It's pretty kinked right there. Yeah, nail that as much. Do you have a zip tie or two? Man, these zip ties suck. Ah, damn it! LTT store cable tie, that won't let me down. We need to hook up our second radiator. Wow. Wow. Can you duct tape me? No offense, but this is not your finest work. What? It's literally in the name, we're making a duct. Oh, what an incredible thing. The best part is this is so much better than the last time that the PT Cruiser radiator was used, so. I mean, that seems fine, right? Yeah, good enough. We haven't modeled it out or anything, but the intake air here is 10.5 degrees Celsius. 30 degrees Celsius difference, we should be able to actually move some heat around. I have no clue how good these are at actually like transferring heat. I mean, it's a big, fat, mini fin aluminum radiator. It can't be that bad. Yeah, it's probably fine. Then again, it came from a PT Cruiser. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty stressed right now. I have banked a lot of money and a lot of the design of this house on this working. I don't have another way to move heat out of this room. And I'm planning to put more computers in here. And I don't know if you noticed, there's no windows. So why is your right ear so cold? Well, I was outside. Look, look at this. Wow. You could say I'm a cool guy. No, just your ears. Ready? I guess so. Oh, there we go. I see it coming in over here. It's coming in? Coming in and out of this radiator, here we go. Tubes are cooling down, excellent. 27, 25. Yeah, it seems to be holding about a degree between the two. It has been over 31 degrees in here all day. My mouth is like cotton, 29.7, 29.6, 29.3, it's still falling. Holy crap, this is working better than I could have possibly hoped, Alex. And what's really cool is we can hook the cold side up to a manifold, meaning that we could take some of our cold water and put it on a radiator to cool the room and some of it directly to blocks in the systems if we wanted to run nice, cool, you know, outdoor slash pool water cooled water to like your CPU or GPU block and then also cool down the room. 29.1. Hey, Linus, come on back here. You need to feel this. So you feel that. Yeah. So this is where the transmission heater is. Oh, that's that secondary loop. So put your hands down here. Whoa! Yeah, it's like so easy to tell. The top of the rad is like 32 degrees. Whoa. Down there, it's like 23, 24. That is sick. It's unfortunate that the positioning of this is not really right then because the hottest systems are these top ones here and we want the hottest air going in here for the best heat exchange. I mean, I can't complain about the results. It was unbearable being back here before. Something we didn't really think about is that a typical pool temperature is what, 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. Yeah. That's not gonna be that useful. So it may actually end up being a good thing that they didn't bury another set of pipes. 26 to 28 is fine for plumbing directly to hardware, but not that useful for- Not for the room. Just exchanging with the room. This might just not do anything in the summer. I do have a question that I've been waiting to ask. Oh? Why don't you just take that box fan and put it in the doorway? Right, so we could make a video. And segue to our sponsor. Micro Center, Black Friday starts now. Micro Center is helping you beat the lines with their Black Friday sales event going on now through November 27th. Check out their amazing deals in store from CPU and motherboard bundles to desktops and laptops. Deals like the Asus Tough Gaming A17 for $400 off and the Acer Nitro 5 for $490 off are up for grabs in store only. 
If you need help choosing parts, no worries. Micro Center's PC Builder can assist with compatibility and get it to you fast with their 18 minute in-store pickup. For a fee, you can check the box marked Same Day Pro Assembly, and one of Micro Center's expert technicians will assemble your PC for you. You will not see in-store exclusives like this anywhere else, so head down to your nearest Micro Center to get your deals today. Links for everything can be found in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy the last time Alex and I played with a PT Cruiser radiator. No, don't throw them to that. We, we have